All right, well, thank, thank you for everyone for being here today. Courtney is extremely kind to be passing out this um, new LC version to everybody. So we're going to let that get passed out, and then we're going to get started. Sorry. <laughs> we're going to get started here in just one minute, so stand by for her to get those passed out. And members of the committee, what she is handing you is where we are going to start with Senator Gooch, just so you know. Chairman Cantrell, what's your mic number? I will call on Chairman Cantrell to open us in prayer. All right, let's pray together. God, we're grateful for uh, the opportunity to be together today, even though it's a little late in the day. We pray, Lord, that you'd help us to have sharp minds and to focus on what's important uh, this afternoon and on doing uh, what's best for Georgia. And Lord, we do uh, lift up our colleague, uh, Representative Will Wade, and uh, the death of his dad, and just pray for his mom and family and um, all that goes on with that. When that happens, Lord, I pray that you'd bring comfort that uh, can only be explained by your presence. And so, God, we lift up this time to you and ask you to, to guide us, please, in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, if I didn't do it before, I'll call the meeting of the House Education Committee to order. Courtney is going to put out a sign-up sheet for anyone who would like to speak. If you are here to speak to one of the bills, uh, I'd ask you to sign up quickly. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Senator Gooch to present Senate Bill 159, LC 393037 by substitute. Thank you, Chairman and members of the committee. You're probably saying, why is he back with this bill? This bill was before you a few days ago, but it is under a different LC number. We were asked to bring it back out of rules to make a small change. And so you're looking at LC 393037S. And I'll just take a quick moment to tell you the changes to the bill. In Section 1, uh, the previous bill had a prohibition on rideshare uh, programs. That prohibition has been removed at the request of your committee members. And uh, we added some language on line 16 where it says operated and marked for the transportation of school children to and from school has been added uh, to that the rest of that sentence on line 17. And that same line or that same language on line 60 and 61 uh, it says students to and from school and school related activities. Those are the only changes to the bill. So appreciate you giving me the opportunity to come back to you absolutely senator we're glad you're back appreciate that those language ads a member of the committee these are very minor language changes of again a bill we've we've already passed and uh representative Lurikia. i had proper time i'd like to make a motion you're pass. recognized for that motion move do pass Second. okay we have a motion and a second that Senate Bill 159, LC 393037 by substitute, do pass. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion Thank you. carries. Thank, Thank you, very you much. Senator. Appreciate it. All right. Senator, thank you for being with us today. If you want to start out, give us the bill number, LC number, make sure we're all on the same page, and then the podium's yours, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, committee members. You're operating in Senate Bill 59, uh, which is 59 slash CSFA. Uh, this uh, bill you have before you today is a great partnership with our Charter School Association and the great work they're doing. We met with all the stakeholders and came up with, I believe, a real good comprehensive solution. This bill does four basic things. First thing it does is today, if you are a charter system, uh, you get an, uh, a per uh, pupil funding of 3.785%. However, if you are a charter school, it was 3%. So there was a difference. All this simply does is bring them into parity to be the same amount of money. The ultimate cost of the state is $3.2 million, and that does not go into this year's budget, but the 2023 fiscal year budget. Sections two and three 
uh, are really simple. So today, when you start a new charter school, uh, they have one opportunity at the beginning to opt into the state health benefit fund. However, if they want to get into the, to the benefits five years later when they renew the charter, they never have another bite at the apple or another chance. This just simply gives them another opportunity at the time of charter renewal. Uh, Section 4, uh, already in law today, make sure that federal funding that comes through through the system would also get down to the local <coughs> charter school. Again, this already exists. This just creates transparency in the law to make sure that those dollars are following through. And last but certainly not least, uh, it relates to facilities in Section 5. Uh, so today, we've had one or two school systems who may have had what they call a mothballed school, right? A building that, that is not being used. And uh, when a charter school had requested to use those schools, uh, all of a sudden they park a bus or two in front of it and say it was a bus depot uh, or put two people from the central office and say it's now an administration building. So the goal is to get them to use that. But if not, and if that's not available, they'll get a stipend not to exceed $25,000. So that's really not a bunch of money. Again, it was negotiated out uh, and brought all the stakeholders to the table to come up with something that made a whole lot of sense. So uh, this bill really is pretty basic, simple. It only does those four things, uh, and I'd open up to any questions. Well, thank you, Senator. If you don't mind, maybe just a couple of questions sure. if I could. D does this take away money from charter systems? No, not at all. Uh, in fact, uh, originally uh, it was going to bring it down, but we brought everybody up. So in this case, they stay the same, and we just bring the schools to meet them again in 2023. Um, does this change any way that federal funds are distributed or allocated to our charter schools? No, Mr. Chairman, this just creates transparency. It's already in the law that they have to do that. Okay. Um, can you give just maybe 30 seconds more for us on why these charter schools need a facility stipend? Certainly. So today, uh, you know, if you think about how uh, we fund public education, and again, I want to make sure everybody knows <clears throat> charter schools are public schools, right? Uh, today, uh, you get a state... Um, a portion of their funding and to get your local point of that funding. Uh, however, oh, we'll make a little room for you here, sir. All right. They only get uh, the state portion of that funding, right? So uh, this, the charter schools operate under a much lower budget, right? So this allows them to get some of those local dollars that would help for that. It's still beneficial to the school overall school system budget, uh, and this is really just a small amount to help them with uh, either a facility or perhaps maintenance on a facility. The chillers go out, things of that nature. Got it. Okay. Uh, questions from members. Representative Wynn. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you, Senator. So I did talk to both of my school districts, and they have taken a neutral position on the bill. They had a couple of concerns, but I think were alleviated. Um, is, have you heard from any school districts on their position? I just want to take into account just what um, school districts across the state are thinking. Certainly, uh, and thank you for your question. Uh, we did meet with uh, a couple of school systems, one of them being Fulton County. Uh, we are the largest charter system in the state, and I, and I believe to be one of the most successful as well. Uh, and we actually made several changes based on their recommendations. Uh, so at this point, we are not aware of anybody who is in opposition. Thank you. Senator. Thank you. Chairman Jaspers, is that number four? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Got a, just a quick question, Section 5, about facilities. So when a system offers a, um, a building to a charter, is there any requirement that it be in occupiable situation, that they can move into it without uh, regard, that would cause them to turn one down like is in 162? Is there any th any in our that makes them only offer buildings that are appropriate? Well, so there'd be multiple reasons why the building might not work, right? It could be certainly the building is not in good order or, or is repair stricken, but also could be on a large county, like Fulton's an example. I mean, it could be 75 miles away, away from where they are, okay. right? So there's, there's several different factors, but in some cases, if there's a building that fits the need, well, gosh, let's use that building, right? Sure. Yeah, I guess, you know, Senator, I'm just... Just, I'm looking through here just you know, quickly, but there's nothing in here that says to make it fair that a local school system, if they offer a charter school system, a building, that it has to be in good repair and occupiable. 
That's true. I'm going to uh, look back at uh, Frank Morris, who is helping me out on this, and see if he has a, a good answer to that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, the, in the law, yeah. in the law, it's Frank. Go to the mic. Go to the speaker. The thank you, sir. Hi, Frank Morris, representing the Charter School Association. Uh, the law um, contemplates that the, the building that would be offered to the school district has to be in the attendance zone, and it has to be uh, well maintained, and that the district will maintain the facility, and it has to meet their size requirements as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Morris. Thank you, Vice Chairman Irwin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, Senator. Just one quick question. Reading through the bill, uh, regional. College and career academies are shared, and some of them in the state are uh, charter system or ch charter schools. When, when three different school systems share that academy, how, is there anywhere in here where we define how we split up the twenty-five thousand dollar stipend? Is that divided up evenly between the three school systems or the different school systems that send kids to that charter school? Well, that's a good question. We have not uh, not explored that one up to this point. Uh, I, I do not know the answer to that off the top of my head. Well, that can I ask? Keep, keep going, Mr. Chairman. It's just, you know, I, I know having been experienced there and, and doing that and sharing, you know, it, it, it would make sense to me to uh, have it defined out that it would split between them. Now, you could do it by FTE numbers, the number of kids that you send there. Um, but from your attendance zones, but that just came up a thought trying to read through the bill. Mr. Chairman, sure. Assistance. Go ahead. So the uh, the requirement for the stipend is that that it's it's requires the district to make the district owned facility available to that school. So it's just it, I'm not sure I caught the 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 bifurcation of three different entities uh, giving up the building, but I know that the well, district. Uh, Frank, what I'm, uh, you know, like the, again, I just pointed out that came to mind, there might be others in the state would be your regional co college and career academies. That, that there's uh, a few of them around the state that uh, different systems use and if combined, rather than building one and paying for it because they wouldn't have enough students to fully fill it up, They've combined with two or three school systems and send those kids to one. Now, it, it's only in one county, in one district, but the kids come from two other counties to that one to fill it up. That would be my question is, would the other two that send kids to there, are they responsible to end the cost of the 25000 stipend? And, they're, and, they're, and you're saying that they're from a di different districts? Correct. Um, I don't know that we comp contemplated that. We, we can work on that. Madam Pro Tem. Are they actually locally approved regional charter schools? Or are they something else like an, uh, a collaboration that doesn't come under with, without a, do they actually have a locally approved charter? That's a good question yeah. too, Ms. Pro Tem. I don't know if I can state that they are local approved or not there they're, they're um, not state approved uh but they may be i don't recall seeing them on the list but it may be something we ought to look at um and come up i mean we, we could either if, if the committee desires we could move it on to rules and it may be something as simple as they're not a charter school um you know they're more of a a regional collaboration that doesn't fit under charter school law that, that that's what i was getting to that if yeah. we could just they regionally afford it then rather than putting it on the home system and or if they because this pertains only if it's locally approved if it turns out it's an issue we could possibly do a substitute in rules to accommodate that uh -huh. but you know whatever the, is the desire good. of the committee good thank you madam pro tem Chairman, I, we just got some information uh, from the Charter School Association. They said in this case there is only one school, so this would not necessarily apply for the multiple funding or one, one entity. So that according to the Charter School Association, it wouldn't make an impact for your specific scenario. Okay. Representative Maynard, what number? Twenty-one. Um, in light of the previous conversation.
question. I was just going to say I wasn't sure if Carver Early Academy, um, I know that they are in the same building as a charter school, if that is similar to what um, Vice Chair Erwin is talking about. So in one building, there's a charter school, and then there's also a local public school. Yeah, so in that case, they're, they're fulfilling this part of it because they're actually utilizing part of the facility. So that, that's perfectly, that's exactly what we're hoping they would do. Okay. Madam Pro Tem. So, so I did get some, some more clarification. So there is one career academy that is an actual charter school. It's in Cairo, and it only serves that county, uh, which I guess would be Grady County. The other uh, career academies are programs, you know, collaborations, some between multiple counties, but they're not charter schools. We so. may have someone who can speak to that. Yeah. If, Senator, if you would yield for a moment, if you don't mind, introduce yourself and offer that comment. Absolutely. I'm Carrie Pritchard with the Department of Education. Um, we've had kind of this discussion of ensuring that you define local charter school. The college and career academies do fall, still fall underneath the charter school law, and they are a three-party contract between um, business partners, the local district, and the state, and then the locally approved charter schools are between the governing board and the state and the local district. So they are still considered locally approved charter schools. So uh, you just have to kind of think about how to define that piece of where the, where it needs to fit in. Independent board. They have an independent board. Every college and career academy has to have an independent board, whether they're part of a system or if they're a standalone charter contract. That's interesting because they, they don't. I don't believe they belong to the state charter school association. They don't. They don't. They belong to. They're a locally approved school. They don't belong to the state. Okay. I mean, usually the, the charter school association represents locally approved and state approved. So that's, but this is a charter between the state, is that right? And the no, system? No, it's from the local district. The local district, okay. the governing board of the college and career academy, and the state. It's the same as a locally approved, and it falls under the, uh, the same law. Okay. All right. Well, that's, so this doesn't contemplate that. It does not. <clears throat> okay, thank you for that comment. Seeing no other questions from the committee, we do have two uh, folks who have signed up to speak to the bill. Uh, Mr. Bierman, if you would like to join us at the podium. Thanks so much, Mr. Chairman. I'll be brief. I know we're getting late in the day. Uh, Georgia School Boards Association, we, we have a little bit of trouble um, with Section 5 of the bill and this particular list stipend um, requiring a stipend there. We appreciate the work that Senator Albers have done in Section 1. We had some concerns with that, and he, he addressed those. And in Section 5, we still have a little bit of issue. I, I think the alternative is not necessarily the, the funding. We want to make sure our, our local charters are funded. But I'll take a look at the um, – our suggestion would be maybe take a look at the um, – charter school facility grants that the house just put a million dollars in in the 22 budget that's over in the senate now so if, we, if they keep it in um to, to address some of the facility needs for local charters thank you thank you um and mr costley thank you mr chairman hello everyone just a couple of uh, comments. We do want to thank Senator Albers for uh, the compromise on uh, evening up that funding, making sure that uh, people that had invested in the charter model were not going to lose funding. So we appreciate the work on that. We do have concerns with Section 5. I want to point specifically, not even not just the content, but the wording of some uh, maybe clarity that is needed. Uh, lines 141 to 146. Basically, it says available for uh, each school, each local school board of education shall make educational facilities available for use by local charter schools or provide a facility stipend to each local charter school to offset costs related to educational facilities. This may just be a minor, minor quibble with language, but you know what I've learned is in terms of administrating policy uh, is to anticipate dispute. And if there is a dispute, which has been wont to happen sometimes between a local charter 
and a school system, uh, it, may be, it may be interesting to, to find out who has the choice, who has the final say in terms of whether to give the facility or the stipend. For instance, in that, it, it does not say that the school system decides. It does not say that the local charter school decides. It just, it, it just states that you will give one or the other. I can conceive of, a, of an instance in which a local charter may say, yes, while you do have that, that, that old building over there, we'd rather have that $25,000. And the school system say, well, we're giving you the building. And I anticipate those disputes if it's not covered other, elsewhere in the legislation. The final thing that I would say is um, the $25,000 stipend, you know, with all due respect, you know, to the senator's comments, um, when we say $25,000 is not a lot of money, I would say that that is relative to which school system that we're speaking about. Uh, if we are in some of the more affluent or larger districts, $25,000 may not be a lot of money, but it is also conceivable that local charters are in places that are rife with economic challenges, and to ask the school system to provide an additional $25,000 a year that they did not anticipate in good faith when they made the agreement with the local charter, they did not conceive when they made that agreement to, to approve that local charter that, that in the future, someone would come back and say, hey, by the way, you've also got to pay $25,000 a year to us. And uh, that might, that might pr uh, present some challenges of inequities economically. And it also, I think the, the school boards of those communities might have a right to say, well, you know, when we approved that charter, we did not concede that we we're going to have to pay a bill for $25,000 extra. It's like adding to the deal after it's already made. Thank you for, for listening. So if we look at line 162, if you have that, the local charter school that declines use of the facility offered by the local board shall not be eligible to receive a facility stipend as provided in this subsection unless or, or provided however. So do, do, when we mention being designated to that attendant zone accommodates the maximum enrollment, I mean, does that do anything that, to? I believe, I will look at that, and thank you, Chairman. I think that would solve that issue. Okay. Ask that question. I, I, it, now you're getting in the details, and I want to make, I want to make yes, sure sir. we get them right, and I want to get that answer bef and make sure everybody's yes. comfortable. But thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Chairman Wade, what, what microphone number over there do you think? 13, maybe? 12. 12. <laughs> Chairman, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I was going to just – point out that section three because I read it as a school board member thinking that I would be as a former school board member I would have read it that our first option is to give them facility if there isn't an available facility then twenty five thousand dollars and if thereby I just I was also confused by the language but then saw that section three the only question that I have is I know in Dawson County um, and Lumpkin County schools that I represent they were both charter systems and I'm curious as to will this change any existing um, situation with their current charter funding? I know they're, they have they have discussed a shared use of a career academy, um, trying to collaborate those kinds of things under two charter systems who are contiguous. And quite frankly, we have a lot of transientness between both of our communities because of work and military with North Georgia College, those kinds of things. So I just want to understand: is that going to have some unintended consequence down the road if they were to? potentially use an old facility for that purpose or even think outside the box like we've had to do during COVID. So it's, I know it's not a lot of money, but I want to make sure it's not going to impact them without my knowledge. Uh, certainly. That's a great question, and uh, I don't believe this is going to impact them at all. They're, they're always open to partner together and work together in a combined way in order to, uh, to help you know, the students in both those areas and share resources. Madam Pro Tem. Yeah, and I, I, I'm going to clarify. Based on the, length, the information I'm getting, I – I do not believe your bill would affect uh, career academies except for the one in Cairo. Uh, they have performance contracts, but they don't, these other career academies, they don't get a grade from GOSA, they don't get a CCRPI score from Georgia Department of Education, they're not eligible for federal charter schools, and so based on what you have in the bill, I'm, I'm comfortable that it probably doesn't need clarity. Thank you, Madam Pro Tem, and again, Cairo yeah. being in that one school zone it wouldn't sure. have an impact. Uh, Representative Howard, are you number 19? Yes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 
following up, I'm, I'm reading and just trying to make sure, and I apologize for running late, so I couldn't get you on the virtual. But we're using, we're, we're saying charter and charter, but are we talking about public charters, private charters? Or All charter schools in Georgia are public schools. And then they're broken down between two areas. There's a charter system, and then there are charter schools, but they are all public schools. So going back to uh, what Madam Pro Tem was mentioning, so the local school systems will approve, be the approval point for the charter. Well, for a charter school, they would approve it, or they can go to the state, and then they're, in my case, right. uh, Fulton, Fulton County, we are a whole charter system, yeah. which is as approved by the state. Okay. R Representative Wynn. Thank Thanks, you, Mr. Sir. Chair. Um, I do want to go back to Section 5. So the speaker before brought up a good point in terms of just some school systems, $25,000 is not a lot, but for some it would be a financial burden. So what would happen in the instance that a school system just couldn't afford to provide that stipend? That's a good question. So if you think about the way a charter uh, school is funded today, mm -hmm. right, they are taking kids who would normally be in that area and would normally be um, taking all of the resources of the normal traditional school, and they're going to a charter, which is getting their state funding, but not their local matching funding. So the school system itself is already benefiting greatly because those kids are still being educated and they'll be able to keep that money for everybody else. So there is already a huge win-win scenario for the local schools to begin with. Uh, so this is just a way to share some of that local tax that they otherwise should have gotten if they were a traditional school. And, and one follow-up, if I may, Mr. Chair. So in that instance, um, a school board is considering approving of a local charter. Do you um, perceive this as perhaps they would choose not to approve one based on the stipulation that they would have to provide that facilities stipend? I don't believe so. And in fact, candidly, minus one or two counties uh, that have been problematic, most have been very good, generous, and worked together on this. And uh, as it usually uh, happens uh, in our Georgia legislature, we tend to address one or two bad actors in law uh, because uh, uh, of some problems and, and inability to work together. Thank you. Representative Evans. Yes, thank you for bringing this bill. <laughs> thank you for bringing this bill. Um, I would like to know, do we have, uh, in regards to the point that was made about who decides if they accept the building versus pay the pay the twenty five thousand? Is there any language we can that can be suggested um, to address that issue? So if we go back to Section 5, uh, you can see uh, that it's going to say, beginning on line 141, they shall make the facilities uh, available for use by them uh, or provide a stipend. Uh, and then really it's, it's for them to work on together. As an example, uh, if you go down to line 162, there's a way for them to be able to decline that. Um, and, and the reason for that could be a lot of different things. And as you'll see, um, if you, I'm not, I won't read the language to you, but it's about you know the, the zone of attendance where they are geographically. If the facility is not in good orders, that's built into that last part of section three. Okay. I'm sorry, of, of subsection three of section five. Representative Lariccia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, on line 152, does that help any with some of the conversation we're having that the terms of a local charter, charter school's use of such a facility owned by a local board of education shall be subject to negotiation between the local? I mean, does that little bit of language in there sort of help with what we're talking about where there would be a conversation between the local school board and to say hey we don't think that facility fits what we're looking for we want the stipend and then the other person says well no we can make an, uh, some additional space available and we would prefer you use our facility so you've got to leave 
you've got to leave some room in there for the locals. Every time we open up those doors for an education meeting, somebody screams local control. And so I think that allows them to negotiate some of that and answers those questions, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and thank you for your clarification, Representative Warwick. Yeah, again, 99% of the time, folks are working together very well and, and coming up with good common sense solutions. And, and I agree, and I think line 162, you know, addresses that. Um, I'm waiting on clarification on some of our other members who Certainly. are watching online. If you'll just Understood give completely. me one minute to My make pleasure, sure Mr. I Chairman. give them fair credit. Okay, um, Senator, I, I appreciate you explaining everything that we had. I think we've we've satisfied uh, all the questions of the committee. I I do just want to confirm one thing and, and make sure that we get our language right. Um, members of the committee, we are going to be here on Thursday, and I do want to take action on this bill on on Thursday, assuming that we can get. Just one piece of language that I, I, I personally want to be be satisfied with. So, Senator, if you'd work with me Certainly. to get that confirmed. And what time is your meeting, Mr. Chairman, on uh, Thursday? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> if I tell you, we'll just change it. All right. Um, I got you. <laughs> so with, with that in mind, if, if members of the committee would, would be agreeable to it, that we could take action on this prospectively without – I don't know where the senator may be during, during Thursday. So I see no more questions that need to be answered. So we – Thank we you. will i'll work with you on that uh and at this point is there anything else for the good of the order seeing none we stand adjourned thank you thank you